you know, so Eddie, I was thinking and had been thinking all, you know, all this week, you know, you know, on the way over, say, oh, you know, what would be great, you know, to discuss? And I was, you know, mostly it was dealing with just preparation, you know, the time that you have to sit, you know, the, the days when you have to, because I used to sit at the organ and my, my, my daughter would be at rehearsal with me. Mm -hmm. Not realizing that you were pouring back into them, seeing you dedicate to something, you know, the type of music that you were playing. Well, we were building a foundation back then, and even when, you know, B-Dub and I played yeah. in the same, you know, band, he knows that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was thinking that we, we all have a certain uh, <laughs> uh, respect for great keyboard players or great musicians. Yeah. And not not trying to embarrass you or put you on the spot, man. But when we hear you play, I mean, you know, we all can 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 shoot basketball, you know, but everybody ain't Kobe and LeBron. Thank you. Hey. That's real. Mm -hmm. Some people were born right. with ten. That's just what it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's just a reality that yeah. I, I've been talking to some younger mm -hmm. guys and be like, man, you can practice all you want to, and you can develop your skill set to be really really great. But the reality is some people were born with five, some people were born with three, some people were born with 10. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is, what I feel is the biggest disservice is the people that were born with 10 don't develop their 10. Right. I think that's a huge disservice. I don't care that you were born gotcha. with 10. I think everybody has a duty and <laughs> service to increase and develop whatever level that they've been born with yeah, to absolutely. increase it and to handle it yeah. with yeah. the right. Uh, with the right care. And it makes for better music in the world. Yes. yes. Yeah. In the world. In the overall. Yeah. Great records. Great right. everything. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I saw that you guys were going to go into something else at the end of that song. You went You went to the vamp and, and you repeated. And mm -hmm. I, I know you guys wanted to open up a little bit. On the on the end on the end of that, I know you're playing "Oh Give Thanks" and oh. you were right you were right with the hook on the end. Mm -hmm. um, let's go back to it, guys. Can can you open that back up again? And, okay. Come and on. Let's, let, let's explore. <laughs> in C sharp. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, can you turn the mics off, you, Lord? Have mercy. <laughs> Thank you.
You know what I like the most <laughs> is that with all what's happening, we still didn't crush. No, sir. Not at all. Not at all. Definitely. That's knowing the melody. Yes. That's knowing what's in that scale and knowing how to listen to your bandmate. Everybody's listening. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. To yeah, me, it didn't sound like anybody was fighting for real. Right, right. It was just, everybody we're riding to together. Mm-hmm. You know, we're riding together. Yeah. And experiment a little bit. And bring it up basket, bring it back up basketball. Uh-huh. When Kobe's on the court or when Mike's, Michael Jordan's on the court, it's like, all right, they want, they're going to involve the teammates, but it's like, all right, Kobe on the court. We got to let him, Kobe's going to take let him more be shots. Let him be right. right. So right. you got to know who's on your team, too. And you know what I'm saying? Why, like, why you didn't say LeBron? You know you from Ohio. <laughs> 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 so, you know, hey, I did, that, I did that for Bennett. I did that for Bennett. <laughs> LeBron, LeBron's going to pass the ball. <laughs> 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 Kobe going to take some shots. Oh, he's going to take some shots. Yeah, he's going to start He's starting stuff, you, you know. know like, Kobe's right. the best. You Kobe's know, I the love, I love LeBron. Y'all know. Y'all already know. I'm going to I'm going to throw some things out there to you, fellas. Give me the first word that comes to your mind. Lakers or Celtics? Oh, oh, oh in terms of? Characterizing each team in in terms of who you would choose, Lakers or Celtics? Oh, Lakers or Celtics? Oh, Lakers. Pet peeve in basketball. Whatever. Period. Pet peeve. Pet peeve. My pet peeve. <laughs> nasty food. Nasty food. <laughs> Lead up. <laughs> My, I, I'm thinking it's just, I got categories, <laughs> I, I, got, you know. I have a lot of them. You're right, right, right. right I got right. categories, you know. Well, music, musical pet peeve? It can be. Life pet peeve? Life pet peeve, musical pet peeve. Mm-hmm. I'll start with music, but you yeah. do yours. Be careful, yeah. your, your wife listening. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to get you yeah, in trouble. Now, musical, musical pet peeves are selfish musicians. Selfish okay, musicians. Can't stand it. Selfish yeah. musicians. Makes it tough, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, best church service you've ever been involved in? Lord, have mercy. I've seen that. Every hard. Sunday. Every Sunday. Every Sunday. Okay. You're okay. going to make all the bishops that I've played for get real <laughs> mad. I, that's why I'm, I will keep my mouth shut. I've played for too many pastors <laughs> to me. There's too many of them watching. I will not. U- UCLA up. or USC? SC. UCLA. USC. SC. UCLA. All right. All right. Uh, favorite. Well, see, I favorite female gospel artist. Hmm. Mm. I gotta think about that. Now. Who's who's popular right now? I don't want I don't want to cut off any lessons. Yeah. I like so many colors. It's I just, enjoy uh, Leandria Johnson. I like her too. Yes, uh, I really enjoy Leandria, Leandria Johnson. Damn. She's she probably the my favorite. Of, yeah. yeah. Her authenticity and. Yeah. Her skill level as far as her approach to singing, she makes it look so easy and she yeah. she just kills every time. And she's keeping the spirit of that James Moore sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I miss like, him. She's aggressive. Like, musically, like, that, yeah. that, 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 the, the finesse the meets grittiness. raw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. she's got it. She's yeah, got Andrea it. Andrea definitely. She's got it. All right. If Fantasia right. Fant- come on over and be all the way over here. She I like that new gospel record she got. <laughs> yeah, that thing is pretty hot. It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it is. If she came yeah. all the way over. And I've, I've been a fan <laughs> of many years of, of Vanessa Bell Armstrong. Yeah. Man. That woman just, you know, I guess it's just what you've ha- been used to hearing, you know, yeah. through the years. That, right, uh, right. She's got like, She is. Like, yeah. you know, just, just... She's at the Mount Rushmore yeah. female yeah, singers. Yeah, she's like Without a doubt. Well, she had the ultimate producer, Thomas Woodfield, as well. Yeah. So. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And mm-hmm. some of those records, uh, Doris uh, Harley yeah. did some mm-hmm. of those records with her. Well, we were well. talking about Thomas Whitfield. You know, maybe Thomas we'll do a, maybe we'll do a show on a <laughs> Thomas Whitfield. You, you got something in the archive? <laughs> 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 We gotta delete the video, man. We gotta delete the video. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Eddie. <laughs> do, do, do the voice again. Do the voice again. <laughs> 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 the tempest is raging. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> the best is the truth. <laughs> You're going to get an inbox when this is over. <laughs> oh, man. I, I mean, and I, when I tell you I know all her records, Why? like the obscure ones that like, like even the, like the, oh, man, she got some songs. Yeah. Some good songs. Yeah, man. Uh, the, you, you, uh, Go ahead, Eddie. That's my song. I have that in my phone right now. That's in my high tone. Come on, boy. I wish I knew the words. Just, just. When the stars appear. Finesse. It's like. She could just sing anything. It's not like a patty record. She could, talk about, she could talk about how a toilet works, and she could, and you're gonna listen. And you're going in. You're going in. <laughs> All right. She's got it. Favorite male gospel artist. Hmm. Favorite so, male gospel artist. Jason Nelson. Jason yeah. Nelson. Jason, Jason Nelson. Nelson is a Jason bad boy. Jason Nelson, man. He's, he's got tone, tone for this. His tone. His tone I, is I, it. He wins me with the tone. The tone you know, is. He's got it. That's yeah. where it's at. Of all time or right now? Just, it just could be. I mean, it's, it's just your opinion. James, James yeah. Moore was my favorite. James, oh, James Moore, Moore was, was the guy. Oh, uh, yeah. I miss that guy. Yes. That's, That's why I love Leandris Johnson so oh, much. Yeah. She's keeping that See. spirit. She's got her own thing, but she's keeping the spirit of that sound yeah, she alive. Yeah. She Thank is. God she for is. her. And, and then also, uh, favorite gospel choir. Is it, is it Hezekiah? Ooh. Is it John P. King? I is love it, the Love Center Choir. I like the to, the Tommies. Is it I Ricky like, Dillard? Is it I think Rick, yeah, Ricky <laughs> Dillard? Uh, you know, all of Bronson, the Thompson community. Thompson I think I, I think they got to be my number one choir. Yeah. yeah, I like I like some LA Mass stuff. LA Mass like stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Just has a certain sound yeah. to it. Mm -hmm. LA Mass was real contemporary. That's yeah. what I liked about it. Yeah. All right, all right. And then they had Goucher on bass. Like yeah. yeah, yes they did. Milton yes they did. Milton Bronson. I yeah, love Milton Bronson like, to this day. You know, yeah. not only we just spoiled by great weather. You know, here in California, yeah, we're Halloween also spoiled squad. by great musicians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're spoiled by great musicians. So, um, we we talked about the stuff that we like. So, what's your favorite hymn? And I'm going to go to our expert on hymns on this one. That would be <laughs> my Craig My personally hymn. is Greatest Thy Faithfulness. That's, that's one of my ultimate. Oh, ultimate. You, you know you can't say that without playing it for us, Craig. I'll, you, I'll just play a little bit of it. I, yes. It's the version I have that I play just because I love this song, but I'll well, play you it. You want to hear I'm gonna take us higher, Doc. Yes, sir. <laughs> now you, you want the band to come in with you, uh, uh, second or third out person? Of stay out the way. Stay, stay out, out of way. his way. <laughs> no. Craig Brockman, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> My version now. Man, when we hear playing like that, uh, you could not be invited to play at my funeral because uh, you're gonna wake up. I probably might get up. I probably might get up, man. It's uh, 
throughout the years, man, I was, you know, just thinking. And I, I said, what was your greatest, you know, church experience? And it, I would say for me personally, I think I don't really have one. Right. But I think when I probably was impacted the most is just seeing people turn their life over to Christ. That, yeah. oh, that gets me, man, every best. single, you know, time, you know, for someone to wholeheartedly give their life over. Yeah. So let's 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 try great as thy faithfulness, um, Eddie, if you don't mind. Oh man, how do you follow that? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Thy faithfulness. <laughs> you. It's my version okay. of it, but you know. it's your version of it, right? You know, somehow along the way, we were riding with you for a minute, and I just feel like you dropped us off. You just said, "Y'all can't go." <laughs> I'm gonna leave y'all right here. I'll be back, but I'm gonna take the car up to the up the street for a minute. It's that, different in a church setting, and I play course. more traditional, you know, more. But you know, it's just. But when you spoil us like like this, you know, we. We want more, you know, you, you want more. I just, I'm always in a constant state of reeling myself in. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm in a, I live in that state <laughs> right. because it's just uh, ideas come to me and, they're, and then one interrupts the other and I have to choose one. <laughs> I get that. It's like, why are you interrupting right. yourself? Well, if you do what was going on in my head, you'd understand. But. Right. Somehow I feel like you're living in the matrix or something, man, where you I've, I've learned to exist He's in Neo. the world. <laughs> He's uh, Neo, right. Yeah. <laughs> That's great, man. That, um, had, did, did you guys ever think, you know, we talked about humble beginnings. Did you ever think that um, at any time, did you spend any time thinking that, hey, you know, I'm really becoming good at this? Or was there ever a, a moment where you paused and said, oh, wow, I, I'm, I'm really becoming accomplished? Or... No. Not me? No. I don't think I can no, remember. I, I hear and see so many great people. I'm not good yet. Gotcha. I'm still yeah. learning, so I don't feel an accomplishment. I, I do feel like I've gotten better and I'm able to climb and make steps and get better at my craft. And I can play with a band now before I was terrible. And But I never feel like I'm gotcha. arrived. That's a good place to be. I, I, I seen a 10-year-old kid on Facebook the other day, and he was so 
able wow. to do things I can't do and I can play very well, but this dude was killing me. Right. So I'm never yeah. that good. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I'm never yeah. that good. I guess I guess in light in a light term, you know, you can you you can use a moment to where I was like, okay, I'm at least like you said, good enough to play with the band when I was coming up under uh, Charles Robinson, which is the guy I came up under, you know, when he would let me play for Offred, that was a big deal for me. Yeah. It was like, all right, I can play with the band now and not just doodle at home or play, you know, by myself. Mm -hmm. like, all right, he's trusting me enough to play in a setting to yeah. where, you know, I can carry the beat and maintain the functionality of the group. I, in that little moment in my microcosm yeah. of success, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm right, getting there. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? Right. Just, to, you know, that was like. Yeah, yeah. this is this is yeah. real work, though. I mean, I've yeah. I've been in at your studio, Brian, back mm -hmm. over, you know, yeah. uh, years ago, and mm -hmm. I was amazed at the time that that Brian spent not at the base. Yeah, it was on the keys because he was trying to sharpen his. That was incredible, you know, to see that a bass player spend time. Yeah. In the lower register on the keys, sharpening up his ear. Yeah. I, you know, talk, talk I, think, about that. I think that my knowledge of other instruments yeah. is what kind of makes me who I am as a bass player because mm. I'm somewhat familiar with keys, because I was a drummer before I played bass. My approach is different. Sure. You know, I'm hearing what he's doing and I'm connecting with it. I'm hearing what he's doing and I'm able to connect with it while staying out of the way. Sure. Without, you know, clashing. Sure. So all of that is important. Knowing, you know, like, for example, if there's a song that mm -hmm. I don't know and I'm in a situation where I have to play it, having the ability to look at the keyboard player's left hand and getting the bass line yes. comes in handy. You gotcha. know, if you can't read lips or you can't, you know, see them or whatever. Because I can't so, read lips. Yeah. I can't stand that. <laughs> Text me or come over to me and you have know. the sheet and everything. Yeah. I don't sure. read lips good. Sure, so you do have a pet peeve, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a few of them. I'm just trying to be told. Right, right, right. So, got another question for you, fellas. If you could not play the instrument that you're playing, what other instrument would you be playing? Bass, no question. Well, which one do you admire? Other than the one that you play, you say, you know what, if I can play... The bass. I have even asked God, I said, Lord, we can make an even swap. If you can give me my skill set on drums, I would never play drums again if you could give me that skill set on bass. Mm. I, I literally I, I wanna I wanna play bass. I'm like your answer, Joe even my even. Play bass, okay? <laughs> I think I got it instead of you. <laughs> That's not a fair question because Eddie can play everything. Some guys, yeah. yeah, some guys can play everything just as well as the yeah. other. So, so you play two keyboard. instruments that I wish I could play. See? <laughs> if you say the bassoon, I'm going to be there. <laughs> no, actually, the oboe. That's one. The oboe, <laughs> okay. okay. Oboe is one. Okay. And uh, violin. If I could oh, play okay. those. But I, okay. I, I have so many visions that I hear the, the, the oboe. I said, man, if I could play that instrument, I could I would probably revolutionize it. <laughs> and hopefully it's not too late. I don't know. Time will tell. Time oh, will tell. We're gonna do a hear and play with the oboe today. <laughs> <laughs> with but that's one instrument I uh, wish I could Maestro play. Eddie Brown. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. So so Ryan, you, if there could be anything else other than the bass, what would you you said you started out on the drum. Yeah, um, it would probably be guitar. I'm, mm. I'm kind of taking a crack at it now, okay. but if I could just play fluently out of nowhere, it would so probably be get, guitar. You want to get your Lenny Kravitz yeah. song, huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, when you guys were when you guys were coming up, right, and you and you, what what was your event where you were <laughs> shell shocked or you were you were in awe? that you were playing behind either this person or at this event. Did you have, did you have that moment? Where I you, had a moment. You were invited to play behind Daryl Coley? And oh, Rich. yeah. I've had all those. Oh, a wow. bunch of them. I, yeah. I remember, I think I was probably 17, and me, myself, well, my friend Bennett, Pacinger, another yeah. monster keyboardist. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, rest in peace, Big Bill, okay. drummer. 
Yeah. And Brent Pacinger, Brent is brother mm -hmm. playing bass, and Andrew <laughs> Goucher was sitting on the front row at this concert in Pasadena. I'm playing like this the whole time. Is he looking? Is he right, watching right. me? <laughs> I hope he likes me. Next thing you know, he yeah. calls me for a gig. That's all right. Andrew Goucher, oh my God, he's the king. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh, wow. It's, it's, it's on. It's an honor, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. And yeah. then I start doing gig after gig. I went out of town. I mean, I went out the country before I was 20 years old, like Great. seven times okay. as a kid because he got to see me and I was like, okay, I needed some work, but sure. he helped me out a lot. Sorry. I got many stories. That's just one, and that's one of my friends. Mm -hmm. But I have many. Oh, my God. I have so many. It's a blur. It's a blur. I can't even. <laughs> it would take me forever to pick one. It's just a bunch of pictures just popped up. Yeah. Played with any other Hawkins family? Yes. For, for I, 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 uh, I didn't get to play with Watcher. I did meet him. Wow. And I remember I played at one of the seminar, one of Edwin Hawkins seminars uh, for this choir from Flint, Michigan. They played, they, they sung at a, his seminar that they was, he was having in uh, Ohio. Okay. And um, the choir sung, and I never will forget. I played. <laughs> Oh, I don't know this is I played and Walter Hawkins, that now you know, like I think he's he was a genius. Yeah, Rest course, in peace. I think the, he's ultimate. one of the best that ever yeah. did gospel. He he helped to define the way it's played, the yeah, way mm -hmm. voices is I think he he was a genius. And for me, I think I was twelve years old and I was playing and I got up off the piano and Walter got up out of his seat and came to shake my hand and wow. was like, who are wow. you? Hmm. That was a moment that yeah, I yeah, just yeah. was like, yeah. what in the world? Yeah. Well, I bet that's, you know, inspiring though, right? That's so inspiring. When folks reach back and- uh, it, makes, it makes you want to be better because yeah. you realize these are like people that I've studied. Yeah. Um, so or whether you guys know it or not, you guys have that effect now. I don't know if you know it or not. What's that? When I go to church services, and I, I'm in the audience, and I see you play. I have that same feeling wow. hearing you play and wow. seeing you play. Like I, it, it wants you to be better. Yeah. You know, it, so, it's like, man, what did he, what did he yeah. do? Or there's, you know, there, there is an interest there, man. So, along yeah. with that, I was gonna say we have to almost be real careful, don't you? Like well, when you interact with folks, that you don't shun folks away. That, yeah. Because yeah. you guys are real humble. We don't have that. But you know, but it's what I do naturally. Yeah. I. I don't think I ever have ever had a situation where I had to tell myself, uh, okay, it's time to be social. Mm -hmm. It's time to reach out. Right, right, right. I just, I, I learned from watching my parents. Sure enough. I watched my mom, especially my mom. I watched my dad. And they, they, they led by example. And when do your comes parents play to, as well? My mom plays piano. My uh, dad could play keys a little bit. Yeah. You know, I mean, well enough to make some tracks. And he plays bass for real, though. Okay. And just watching how they interact with people and uh, with immediately step out of just, just wreck the church and step out and just, and I just, it did something to me. Mm -hmm. It's just like, that's the way you're <clears throat> supposed to be. And I remember the church just, growing up and out. My, my dad sung, was a pastor, God rest his soul. But my dad sung in a quartet. And uh, that was, you know, initially where my interest was, they had the pot of blue tuxedos on with the ruffle shirts. And they, <laughs> I'm going to suggest that to my group. <laughs> and I remember their album, man, it was called The, the Gospel According to St. Rest. That was mm. that. Wow. And they had that song in there, uh, We Will Understand It Better By and By. And I, every time mm -hmm. I hear that song, it gives me flashbacks. It yeah. almost has like a ragtime, you right. know, feel. But uh, mm -hmm. I can remember having a love and an affinity for gospel music. And I met, during those days, it was a choir director named Donald Love. And I ended up meeting Keith Pringle wow. and the Pentecostal Singers. And from Man. that point, I was done. You yeah. know, every, what you got, Eddie? You got some Keith Pringle? <laughs> every time I, I hear his name, that groove. <laughs> <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. 
Você gostou? 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 Really? Yes. And he's one of the baddest keyboard players that ever played gospel music. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. One of the best. One of the best that ever did it. Yeah, I remember yeah. seeing Keith Bring on the Pentecostal choir sing at the old and I think that's Greater really Bethany. Like wow. See, yeah, now you're talking to old real time. Yeah, he's really talking before. Yeah, but I yeah. think Jeffrey LaValle wrote that song. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm just, no, we're that, good. You just we're took good. me back to that time and <laughs> right. I just yeah. got in the oh, time machine. We got a lot of ideas, you know, that we can explore.